Hey, how's it going, everybody? Sorry to make this a little weird. Uh, I just had a thought. I was replying to this guy, uh, off the Curve Ministries, but not so much him. He made a video on Stone Cold Steve Austin and basically Stone Cold's view on how he, uh, his, his, his theological views, his views on God, his, his worldview. He was just like, he was talking about, uh, sorry, I guess I'm conscious about this. Um, he was talking about how, like, you know, well, hell, you're just a bad person. And then, you know, uh, you know, you just drink tequila. And I know you're joking around. I find it kind of funny. Like, and then you go, you, uh, you drink uh, some champagne with God and Jesus. And he's just like, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm just kind of up in the air. You know, I'm like agnostic. So, and uh, he said he used to go. And then his parents stopped going. And then he went he kept going and he stopped going his parents went he said it's just whatever you know you appreciate people who do go do who don't go and i guess the guy this guy from off curb ministries he's basically going to say because i i stopped that at the beginning because I, I knew where it was going he was talking you know he was because <clears throat> he says like uh think stone cold steve austin has this perception that if you're a good person then um let me just stop there um, God's view for according to the Bible is this idea of good the word of good the word good is essentially acceptable and it's like acceptable in its full measure now everybody from what I understand when they say they're good in the eyes of God they grade it on a curve you know they grade it like you know okay there we do some bad stuff but we we mean well so we do some good stuff <clears throat> And I say, I want to tell people is that, you know, with God, God is supposed to be this infinite, infinite being that has created not just this, this pale blue dot, but the entire solar system. And forgive me, I'm a little self-conscious because I'm like, I want to get this under 33 minutes, but I'll try to, I'll try to, but if not, if not, but, um, like God created everything. Right, he said to have created everything. His name is He'll be what He will be. His name is, and especially historically, it's just so holy that they have essentially like uh, barred His name, His true name, you know. Uh, and I, I forget, I, I know His name is based off the Tetragrammaton, that His true name isn't necessarily found, but you know, when people call Him Yahweh, but like YHWH. But they say like, you know, his <clears throat> God's attributes, they say he's love in the Bible. You know, he's he's just so grand. You know, if he's the very essence of love, just consider what love is. Consider it compassionate, kind, patient. It's like the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, uh, self-control. It was something else. I always forget that last one. But, um, <clears throat> uh he's just all these things he's just the very essence of love just consider it and people when they say they've seen god they say he's so beautiful almost indescribable and just think of that the very essence of love is so indescribably good and the fact that people and i i empathize with that a bit when people say like you know he has to you know but that's the very point is that no god does not agree on a curve and that it would be impossible for him, like, I'm sorry, I was trying to be clever, but, um, in order for God to, uh, grade us on our goodness or in our badness and our wickedness and our, our mishaps and our falling short, you know, because that's what sin means. It just means you fall short. If there's a bullseye and you're supposed to get that bullseye and that's what God's perfection is and you hit anywhere apart from that bullseye, you have sin, you know. So God's perfection is that defined, that fine. He says you hit this point or you don't. There's, there's just a binary. You do it or you don't. And that's why Jesus is so important because he removes you from your guilt. And not just your guilt, but the guilt that is, I would say is under God's law. Like, you know, he says you either are in my holiness or you're not. 
I can't be around people who are greater than on, on a curve because their sins are still there and they it has to be paid. And back in the day, they paid it with animals. So they offed animals, they killed animals in replacement to the people, the Israelites sin or Israelis sin. And then they sent it off into the wilderness, they put it on the animal and they sent it off, you know, and we just understand that like you know you that's just insufficient you know and as we understand as christians we just you know the uh the the sufficient blood of a perfect man who has never sinned that is as we understand it it's supposedly jesus the christ the anointed one the son of man uh and that's a title from i believe in the book of daniel but also of i mean uh but the, also the term the son of God, but more importantly, the son of man. His blood was shed for us, you know, and also even when we think about it, from what I understand, uh, a bull, a whole bull was massacred for, I believe, the priest. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the priest. That's just one. That's a whole animal for one person because he's the one who's diligent and in, in taking care of the matters of God. So he has to be clean. So. It's like the person, it's like, it's almost like when you think about it, like a doctor, like if you've seen like the, uh, Dr. Strange, where he's a doctor and he had to clean his hands and he had to do it a certain way so that the, the germs wouldn't like essentially, um, it wouldn't be like fall off his arms or something like that. I don't know. I forget. But like his cleaning method had to be pretty particular because, you know, if he's a surgeon, he has to be clean. You know, and that's this is a real life thing. Like, you know, when you clean your hands, you got to be clean. You can't mess up on that cleaning process. You sit here and be careless. You'll bring some foreign bacteria into somebody's body that is that will bring infections and all that stuff. You know, it's important, man. It's just super important that you keep yourself like it's almost like the body is holy. But at the same time, as we understand with the medical stuff, your body is just your body in a way, it's kind of set apart because you can't bring any any foreign substances in there. It'll just jack your body up. You know, when they open you up and they do what they got to do, they have to make sure they're sterile, they're clean, their instruments are sterile. When they going in and going out and taking, you know, closing your body back up and sewing you together and all that, because I've been in two little s surgery type deals. Uh, one when I was super young and one when I was like in think a few years ago, let's just say that. And um, yeah, and they they have to be very careful, you know, because you know you you you're durable, but you're also fragile, you know. So I'm just saying, like you know, um, when it's working with God, you know, it's just you just got to it's it's a, it's a delicate process, you know. And they like from what I understood, they had a rope. So that if a person came in there and they went to the Holy of Holies, that was supposed to be the presence, not the actual thing of God, the presence of God. And they weren't right. They were, they were, from what I understand, were down the spot. And so if they down the spot, they would get that rope. They, Because, you know, I guess they couldn't come in. And they pulled that dude out of there, you know. So, um, yeah, um, I forget. I'm sorry. I, I just lost my place with all that. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, you know, there's this misconception about and it's, it's, it's a strange thing because it's, it's, it's like a stereotype that good so-called good people are in heaven and bad people are in hell and good people, for some reason, think God grades on a curve and and they forget why Jesus is important. Jesus is important because he's so important. So important. You want to know why he's important? I'm sorry, I'm I'm being a little 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 facetious almost. But like Jesus is important because he ha he cleanses you from that that guilty uh thing there that's, that's just hovering over us. You know, and, and when we feel guilty, we just commit more stuff inadvertently. We like we just incidentally continue to to, to fall into the same traps. You know, when Jesus died for us, you know, he did the work. He did the work already. All we got to do is believe. That's really it. You just believe in the work he did already. Then you now walk in a new life. 
You know, so it's like you are cleansed. But now you have a new, <clears throat> sorry, you have a new responsibility, you know, to now walk in this freedom, you know, walk in this freedom, walk in this love, walk in this joy, but also to understand God's heart about things, <clears throat> to be like, yo, God is so amazing, so big, so expansive, and he's, <clears throat> now everybody know about love, he's supposed to be the thing of love. You know, who made everything. Just think about that. Love created the universe. Just, I know it sounds lofty, but just really think about that, you know. We say the Big Bang, uh, and we say it happened out of nothing, but whatever. I don't know. I haven't been there in the beginning of the universe. I, I just don't know. I just take it in faith. <clears throat> God spoke, and things happened. Some people may believe, excuse me, <clears throat> that the Big Bang happened, and, you know, Nothing, the Big Bang happened and it created everything. But all I know is that we're here, you know. And according for me in the scriptures, you know, love created the world. And love created us, human beings. And they say, from what I understand, like God created us so that we can um, show off how great love is. Show off great God is. And, you know, we show our humanity but we show off uh, an intended humanity, you know. We show off like the best we can do, and as we as we aim to grow in this this likeness to be like love, the true, pure, and perfect love itself. We just we we draw near to to God. We draw near to this this image, this entity of love, and we try to be more perfect. Not easy. It's actually hard, you know, and um. For those who claim to be in the faith, you know, you just have to really see, you know, see if they actually are what they claim they are, you know. Uh, and that's that's kind of a problem, even something I've been struggling with personally, is like, you know, yeah, we say, hey, we love God, but sometimes loving people is a tough deal. It's, it's not easy. And so, um, just, we just, day by day, we just keep coming forward to the image of God. <laughs> trying to change trying to draw near to him trying to love our enemies you know trying not to be conformed to the images um of of uh the world um of the images against the faith or um even the images in the faith with the people who were just flawed heroes you know the people of our faith you know, like Abraham, you know, uh, maybe even Moses. Like a lot of our people, if you really think about it, if you really read it, a lot of the the, the Jewish history we have are flawed people. And the, hub the person, but what makes him amazing is God himself. He's the one who redeems them. He's the one who blesses them and gives them new uh, fixtures and plat and uh, fixtures of just just lights in heaven. Like he's the one who's doing all the the glorifying. You know, he's the one who who bolsters up their nations and and bolsters up their arms and give them uh, reasons for praise. God is the the protagonist in this in this story. Even I can't remember what was it Abraham Isaac or something where they had the uh. uh had the 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 uh, ram in the bush where he took his son. He was like, God was like, yo, I know you. I'm sorry, I hate to do this, but God told him, hey, I know you had to uh, wait for like, like for about 80 years for your son, but I need to cop him. You know, I need to get him. You know, I need to to make him into a sacrifice right quick. And he's like, okay. You know, I seen videos where they like they had the kids struggling and stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, maybe kids will struggle. I don't know. All I know is that he did it. He was able to do it. You know, it's not like the kid was like, yo, what are you doing? And stuff like that. I mean, he could have. He could have. I'm just opening my mind to the experience because I'm like, I don't really know what happened. I just know that he was able to successfully be in that position to offer up his son as a sacrifice. and He was going to kill his son. But then an uh, angel of the Lord stopped him. And he's like, yo, that's this. Okay. I just wanted to give you a test. To see that you wouldn't 
you wouldn't withhold your very son from from God. And he saved his son, and in in his son's place, they found a, a ram in a thicket. Grab that ram, sacrifice that lamb. So he killed the lamb. I mean, not it wasn't a lamb, it was a ram. Sorry, he killed the ram, and um, made that sacrifice to the Lord. And uh, even then, the whole I desire mercy, not sacrifice. That's another aspect of of God, you know, because you know. Like these, these lambs, these animals, they, they mean something, whether they're sacrificed to God or they're sent out into the wilderness, but also like God, he, he just, he has higher values for us, you know, and it's not just these ritualistic things, you know, he, he desires our hearts and our actions. And when God says, uh, okay, you need to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, you know, it's not just, you know, okay. I'm finna burn myself in the fire. No, it's not about that. It's about now you give your lives. You live for God. You you love people. You um you keep living your service to God until it's time to go. It's time for your life, your lifespan to be finished up. You give it in service to other people. You love people, you're patient with them, you practice peace, you uh try to draw near to God and you pray, and you warn people, and you love people, and you share the good news of Jesus. And people, when they see your, um, some people may not like it, but some people may be like, wow, what, you know, what are you doing? You know, why are you so this or that, whatever, whatever, you know, and then you just share, hey, it's Jesus, you know. And then some people might give you their perspective on what they think Christ is, which is the point of this video. Because some people have this stereotype about uh, so-called good people. God doesn't believe that people are good because his good is absolute. He's not a, oh, okay, it's good enough. Oh, okay, uh, it's like making a hot dog, you know. Okay, I made it. I could have heated it up a little more. I could have boiled it a little more. I could have added all the fixings. Because, you know, like over here in Chicago, they just they pretty much decorate their hot dogs. It's, it's like a whole party trick. It's just, it's got, it's got, it's got everything. Let's just say that, man. Like, cause I'd be, I, I'd be kind of, I wouldn't say hungry yet, but like, I'd, I'd tire myself out trying to list the type of stuff they get for the, for a hot dog, like uh, onions and relish and tomatoes and peppers and a whole lot, the whole gambit. It's just, it's just a little annoying to me. And then. I could talk about this, especially that ketchup thing, but um, yeah. Here I'm talking about hot dogs. Uh, I, I, yeah, I've, um, I'm done. I just want to reply to that because I'm like, I'm like, God requires so much from us. Like, if we really, like, understand, like, the, the big deal, like, you know, because we, I, I feel like in Christianity, in a Christian culture, and the people who's outside the culture, but they are, like, nominally Christian, they're like, yeah, I can, I'll, I'll do this, but I, it, I got other things to do, you know, and I'm like, I just wish people would understand that, like, God isn't this thing who's just, yeah, I guess, whatever, he's not Joe Pesci, he's just out here tired and and just strung out on sleep or something. I don't know. He he ain't some lazy janitor guy. He's just he's God, you know. He he's always moving. He feels, you know, and feel like you know he's a um. He just he he does everything he can get for us, you know. He he shows love. He shows honor. He's he's patient when we sit here spazzing out like in the Book of Job. You know, I know for Job, he kind of had to set him straight. But like in Christ for us, you know, Christ mediates us. You know, Christ, uh, we talk and we 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 talk to God. We pray in Jesus' name, you know. God is just so much more with people than people's misconceptions. And that's probably what I'm trying to say. God is so much greater than our misconceptions. He's not just, you know, we just sipping wine and sipping drink and yada, yada, yada. Which reminds me, you know what? I was gonna, I am gonna mention it because I'm like, I seen a documentary like this was years ago that I'm like, Stone Cold had to stop like sitting here doing his signature, uh, like six pack drink 
because he was like popping holes in them and he used to drink them all at once. That used to be a signature, but then it was like, you know, you need to slow down from drinking like that. And so I'm like, I get it's, it was funny to me when I when I listened to it, but I'm like, God's not this. Yo, let's just chill out, dog. I'm like, what if God is, is like, you know, maybe you don't need a drink, you know? I don't know if drinking is in heaven. I don't. I really couldn't tell you. But I know God, in his mercy and his love, he has made a way in Christ. You just believe. That's really it. You, a lot of these other religions, they tell you you got to perform the, the shahada, the six, five pillars. Sorry, five pillars. You got to believe this, believe that, do this, do that. You have to, um, like, I mean, I know Buddhism isn't like a, a religion. It's like a philosophy. So you have to do these practices. And even then, I got different sects of it. Um, sex, sorry, S E C T, but um, and other faiths and stuff. But I'm like, Jesus just say, Hey, just you believe, believe me, believe me, you know. And that's all, man. Like, yo, you just gotta believe and see. And uh, all right, I, I, I'm good, I got it.